Hi, today we're looking at auto reversing units. I currently have a layout where I need two auto reverse loops. And when I first started to do a little bit of testing, I, I ran into some issues with it. One of the prerequisites is that I be able to power it from different types of DCC systems. So I have three DCC systems. I have a Digitrax Chief, and I have an Ecos ESU50200, and I have a Sprog 3 that I run JMRI on. So I want to be able to use any of those three systems. And I run a lot of sound equipped locomotives, so they have to be running seamlessly over the, over the setup. Uh, and when I first did some testing, uh, I found some issues. I'm going to test three different units. I'm going to test uh, Digitrax PM42 uh, because I've got some familiarity with it. I'm going to try, test a Digitrax AR1 and I'm going to test a PSX AR and I'm likely going to test a Tam Valley, I believe it is, that produces them frog dual frog juicer that can be set up for auto reversing so those are the three things that i'm going to be testing and the three dcc units or the four things in the three dcc units uh, but first i'm going to make sure that i clean the track so that everybody has an equal opportunity and i'm going to use three different locomotives in my testing here which i'll explain in more detail first up the actual loop that i'm using starts over here with a join, comes around here, and comes to this point where there's a join. So there's full uh, insulation across here, making this one loop. And there's insulation right across here as well. So the reversing loop really goes from here around. But in order to do my testing, this here is the A side of the track. So we come around and we can do the A side. Now, in a crossover situation, which is what I'm going to have this turnout set for, as soon as it hits this area here, it's going to have to flip. I'm going to let the local go through, and then I'm going to come back, it's going to be okay, and then once it comes around to here, it's going to have to flip again. And then as I drive through, it's okay, and it gets around to here, and then it's going to have to flip again. So excuse the crappy drawing, but this is a, a, a drawing attempt at what, I'm, uh, what I have set up. When you look at the top, you see the crossover, and you see the A's and the B's. The A and B uh, indicate the track polarity. The vertical blue lines indicate where I've isolated the line, and you can see the two red circles. That's the loop that we're going to use for this testing. So when it enters the top red circle, uh, it will align the reversing loop so it looks like the AB you see. As soon as it touches the uh, second red circle, it will reverse the A and B within the loop to match the, uh, the line that's going from the lower left to the lower right. Three different locals, as I say, which I'll show you later. Uh, and we're just going to tally up the results. I've got a spreadsheet here that I've created already. All I'm going to do is put a 1 in if it uh, was successful and a dash or something if it's not. Oh, and then I go ahead and fill it in on Excel later and it sums up everything for me. Uh, but first off is, try, is to clean the track. In order to clean the track, I have three things. First of all, the normal, this happens to be from Walther's, I prefer it. It's a pretty fine abrasive. So I'll go over the track with that. Then I use this guy which is a vacuum. Uh, extend that out, vacuum up anything that I may have deposited there. So that'll go next. And then I found these. These are chamois, or synthetic chamois, on the end of some plastic. And by using rail cleaner, uh, I can soak them in rail cleaner and rub them along. I'm only going to worry about cleaning the section in here that I'm actually going to use for the test. So it's the typical take your abrasive cleaner however you want to do it. Uh, I normally run it along like this and then as I get into areas like this that are uh, lots more track I'll run it on its edge and turn it on the portable. Side, soak 
this side. Yeah, I spilled some on there. Then go through here. Yeah, you can see already the dirt that that picks up, and that's just a tiny bit that I've done there. And back to the staging track. Now you can see that's the after and that's the before. So fair amount of gum. Uh, three engines on here. We have a P42, uh, number 16 there. I have a little uh, switcher. Uh, oh, the P44 is an SDN 144K0A Digitrack sound decoder. Uh, that I installed. The little Alco unit has an ESU micro decoder installed at the factory and the nickel plate at the end uh, has a Bachmann Easy Sound decoder installed at the factory. So I have three different locos with three different sound decoders. We are testing three different locomotives. The Amtrak P42 with the Digitrax SDN 144K0A decoder I put in. Second one we'll always be testing is the Alco S2. It's Atlas. It's got an ESU decoder in. And the third one that we're going to be using all the time is the Bachmann Pair Marquette. I believe that's a 482 or something like that. Uh, first up, we're always going to use the Digichax Chief DCC system. And uh, for the first series of tests, we're going to use the Digitrax PM42, which is a circuit break auto reversing unit for up to four sections. Okay, so we're now going to start this test. Remember, the plan is to run the engine around the reverse loop. This is fine, it won't switch here. Once I get to here, it'll switch. That'll be one, that'll be two, that'll be three, that'll be four, that'll be five, and I. I think I'll end up doing six. That's what I got marked on here. Uh, and this is at 50% throttle. So going forward. And that's a dash. Okay, because that shorted out that section of track, you can hear the local start. But let's see what happens when it backs up. S2. It's a dash. And then we'll reverse it. Test 3 didn't work. Now we're just going to let this guy go through at full throttle because he's not that fast. Now, he failed because I had a noticeable glitch there. I cut him down to about 75% throttle. So that's a fail. It's just that the decoder is a little more taller on it. Come down to 60% throttle. Fail. 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 And we'll see how it goes. That was a pass. And 
we're off the track there. So we'll have to get this guy back on the track again. And that was a pass. a stumble. I'm going to give that a minus. For the next series of tests we have the ESU ECOS 50200 DCC system that we're going to be testing again with a PM42. Okay so here we go with the next test which is the PM42 again with the ESU ECOS 50200 and we'll start with engine number 16 again. And uh, we'll enter this at 50% uh, throttle. That's a fail. We're now going to test using a Sprog 3 and JMRI. The Java Machine Railroad interface is running on a Mac laptop. Here's a screenshot showing the engine roster in the background and the throttle in the foreground. Okay, got the Sprog 3 unit hooked up. Uh, PM42 Sprog 3 with JMRI on a Mac laptop, Mac Pro. And uh, I'll have to do the same testing again. This is the PXAR auto reversing unit. I'm using this instead of the PM42 now and I'm going to repeat all of the tests that I've done before. So I'll use all three engines and I'll use all three systems in the same order using the Digitrack system, then the Eco system, and then JMRI on the Sprog 3. So I'll go ahead and rerun all of those tests again and accumulate the results. Now we're going to redo all the tests again with the Digitrax AR1 auto reversing unit. This reverses one loop. There's a little pot in the upper left hand corner to adjust sensitivity. And again, I'm going to start with uh, Digitrax Super Chief, run the tests on all three engines, then use the Ecos, all three engines, and then use the JMRI and Sprog 3 in all three engines. And we have the results. As you can see on the left hand side on this spreadsheet I've got each of the three auto reversing units. In fact I got room for a fourth one. I don't have that. Beside each I've got each of the three DCC systems uh, and those are repeated for each one. Then across the top I've got the three locomotives at both mid speed so locomotive 1 mid speed, locomotive 2 low speed, locomotive 2 mid speed, locomotive 2 low speed, locomotive 3 mid speed, locomotive 3 low speed, first locomotive 6 tries in each one, and the second two locomotives 4 tries in each one. A 0 indicates a fail, and a 1 indicates a pass. And uh, it fails if it hesitates or stops completely. So even though it may keep going because it's got a good decoder, if the light went out and the sound stopped, then I record that as a fail. Then what I did is I added the elements up vertically because there are two areas to the reversing loop, uh, and so two potential areas where it may fail, and those are different. And I wanted to see whether there was a difference between the two. And as you can see, I end up in the, the first failure potential area uh, with 25.8% passing and in the second with I think that's 33% passing. So there seems to be a little bit of difference. I may have to check my wiring a little bit on that second one just to make sure things are going okay on it. Okay. 
And then if we move from there to the test summary, I've gone through and I've summarized the tests overall by percentage. And when you look over on the right hand side there, you can see that for the Digitrax PM42, uh, the results go from 17.9 to just over 50%, so mostly failures. For the AR1, which was actually the third one tested, uh, the best response is 50% on the Sprog 3, and the others are lower. And then when you look down at the PSX AR, you'll see almost a, a perfect response. In fact, with the PSX AR, there is only one failure recorded in all the testing. So we go back here and look at this, you can see the Super Chief, there's that one zero fail. Other than that, everything passed. So. When I look at this, this tells me that the PSX AR is far more reliable uh, and the other two are much more susceptible. Now, the PSX AR is more expensive. It costs about the same as the PM42, but the PM42 does four districts as either a circuit breaker or an auto reverser. The Digitrax AR1 only auto reverses one part of a loop and it's about a third of the cost. So it depends on your requirements. If you weren't running sound equipped engines, something like the AR1 would probably work okay and maybe even the PM42 you'd have some hesitation but not a lot. Anyway, that's what the results are after going through a full evening of testing.